So Dawkins, notice, is living in a contradiction on this issue. All right? He talks on the one hand kind of like an atheist, and then all of a sudden, when his guard is down, his natural understanding of morality that God built into him is coming out. But it's a contradiction with his atheism. When his guard is down? Apparently. <laughs> just because he he understands that there are there's some moral code going on doesn't mean it has anything to do with your God, dude. <laughs> Take Richard Dawkins, for example. He's probably the world's most famous atheist right now. Dawkins says that, on the one hand, if you look at nature, according to him, there is no design and no purpose and no evil and no good. Nothing, he says, but blind, pitiless indifference. Obviously, fucking hate Dawkins. I really wish that, that, that these apologists would quit using Dawkins but in these things. Agreed. But to be fair, I agree with this. This is the third time in the last couple of weeks that people have pulled this particular quote out. Really? So I don't know what kind of seminar or maybe like <laughs> STR talk that was done or something like that. One of their universities. One I'm of sure. their fucking fake ass universities harped on Dawkins, this one quote from Richard Dawkins. But, you know, if y'all could just not all take the exact same course and then put out material, that would be great fucking great. Uh, I do agree with the, this quote by Dawkins, however much I, I loathe Dawkins, because he's basically saying the universe is amoral. Yeah. The universe doesn't give a shit about you, but that's just because it's the natural world and the natural world doesn't have feelings. And it's not sentient. Yeah, it's not sentient. It doesn't so have any kind of agency behind it. It's just there. And the reality that we have is exactly what we would expect if there were no any uh, if there weren't any of these things like no design, no purpose, no evil, no good. Where it's gone in the past is they've con conflated or equivocated this particular statement mm -hmm. with human behavior. Yeah. So that's that's different from like natural, natural, the natural order of things. Right. Mm -hmm. So within the natural order things have a purpose. Things have a purpose within the natural order, but it's not a purpose that is like assigned to them by some being. There are individual steps in natural processes that are required for that process to work. You right. know what I mean? And like certain things are required, like trees are required to put oxygen into the atmosphere and well, plants, you know, like, so, I mean, there are certain things that are, that, do have a purpose. Well, so the equivocation that he's probably going to pull mm -hmm. is equivocating just a general purpose for something or a general reason, mm -hmm. rather, why something happens with transcendental purpose. So something that transcends like our human experience or right. transcends reality in general. Well, that's what I was trying to say. They have a purpose yeah. within a natural process, but it's not something that has been assigned to them by some sort of sen sentient being. Right. Yeah. But but see, here's the weird thing is that the transcendental purpose for Christians mm -hmm. is, is, in my experience, has just been to worship God. I mean, that seems to be the main message in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And it seems to be the one thing that, you know, most, if not all Christians can agree on is that you got to put God first. You got to think of God first. Well, so I think it depends on what kind of Christianity you're looking at. And that's for, for evangelicals and the more fundamentalist Christians, I think that's absolutely true. Uh, for the more mainstream Christians, I'm not sure that that's, that's really accurate. Not that they would say put God second, but like, I mean, I grew up Catholic and went to a Catholic school. I also went to church to Southern Baptist church every week when I was growing up with my grandmother. Um, so I got a view from a Southern Baptist way and a view from a Catholic way. I never really was taught put God before everything else. The main, the main thing that I was taught, and this is just my, my own anecdotal experience, right? But the main thing that I was taught was that put others first. God teaches you Jesus. Jesus would teach you to take care of each other and to, to put others first. That was the main message that I got. And I grew up doing all kinds of charity work and things like that. And by putting others first, you're putting God, you're doing God's work and you're worshiping him in an appropriate way because you're taking care of 
your neighbors. Let's see, that's the exact opposite as I was taught. Really? Yeah. I mean, not not during my time as a Catholic, because, you know, I was a horrible Catholic. <laughs> Um, but I'm talking about like my time is like a non-denominational and Baptist Southern, ba- both Baptist and Southern Baptist. Mm-hmm. Now, to be fair, I went to a Southern Baptist church in Ohio, which is not exactly the same as a Southern Baptist church in Alabama. Right. So. And, and so, I mean, I, w- I was taught differently. I mean, I was taught to put God first in everything. And, and you can see it in some of the mainstream uh, denominations out there. Sure. Uh, about, uh, you know, with how um, involved people get with God in their life. At work, I had my boss at, at a, at a um, meeting recently where he was like, my number one thing is make sure everybody gets to heaven. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, well, fuck it. I'm failing already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that I'm not trying to say that that wasn't some, that that's not an underlying factor in, mm-hmm. in Christianity. I think it certainly is elevating God to this, you know, level above and always keeping God in mind when you're making decisions and doing things that, you know, like the whole, what would Jesus do thing? You yeah. know, you're, you're thinking about what God would do, what Jesus would do and um, living your life based on that. But I guess it was just taught to me in a little different of a way. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't so blatant, like God comes first kind of thing, you know? Yeah. But I mean, like you were talking about earlier with how people use their religion, Mm -hmm. a lot of of even the mainstream religions now are, you know, saying that, you know, uh, if there's anything wrong in your life, it's because you're not putting God first. Like, you know, you're not. Well, that's fair. I mean, that is that is something that is quite common. You're doing something wrong Mm -hmm. that's displeasing God. I think they need to read Job, though. (laughs) Job will set their ass straight. I don't. Man, now that totally consistent with this atheistic worldview. No evil, no good. Belief in morality, on his view, is just a trick evolution plays on us to get our selfish genes into the next generation. So at that point, when he says that, he is making statements that are completely consistent with his worldview of atheism. So I don't think that atheists think there is no. Now, I'm going to use evil in a very loose sense as meaning bad because he says no evil, no good. Mm -hmm. Right. So no good, no bad in the atheistic worldview, which I think is a weird thing that he would need to define. But uh, as as far as being an atheist, the idea that there's no good and no bad, I think is ridiculous. We just well, base our morality off of something different. <laughs> it, he's confusing Dawkins' statement about nature and reality. With human behavior. With human behavior or our human understanding of events that happen. We would see a, a seal pup violently raping a penguin as being something bad. I mean, I think that that would be unpleasant for the penguin. Well, yeah, but I mean, as as far as we understand that entire concept, I mean, th- that's like an objectively bad or uh, considerably evil thing to do. I mean, in nature, I don't know if that's true. Like, I mean, I guess they I mean, they've killed them before. It's a pretty violent process, right? With the seals right. and the penguins. Yes. OK, so, yeah, I think we can probably say that that's not good. Well, yeah. And, uh, well, I'm and I'm specifically ta- I'm not talking about from an uh, an objective standpoint of like, at, you know, outside of our own human experience, like consent and all of those things, like, right, we're not applying. OK, right. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about like from our experience, like from our perspective on the situation, like if we saw that happening and be like, oh, shit, that seal sucks. Like that seals like doing something that's bad. Like I'm just saying from a strictly uh, human experience that's how we would view that situation. Like, Oh, that's okay. bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about like outside of, of, of ourselves or gotcha. of our okay. experience, but that's where Greg and uh, people like Greg and, and like Frank Turk, William Lane Craig, they misconstrue this concept of an amoral natural universe with our experience of the universe. And so we kind of they conflate the two thinking that they should be the same thing. Well, and human behavior is not the same as a natural process. Right. So it's just I I agree. I agree. Conflating those things is totally wrong because we can say nature, um, the natural processes, things that happen in nature are amoral. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the things that we do as people, um, I mean, some things are completely amoral, but there are certainly morally 
uh, positive and morally negative things. However, on the other hand, in his book, The God Delusion, he attacks the God of the Bible. And here's what he says. He says, the God of the Old Testament is a vindictive, bloodthirsty, homophobic, racist, genocidal, sadomasochistic, malevolent bully. Now, do you see the problem there? No. No, I don't see any problem. But also, I like how he just skipped right the fuck over bloodthirsty et ethnic cleanser. <laughs> Like he did, he didn't want to say that. He's like, ah, oh, God, kind of. He does ethnically cleanse some shit there, so I can't disagree with that. But the rest of it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> um, no, I don't see a problem with that because in the one context, you know, Dawkins is talking about how amoral the universe in the natural world is. Mm -hmm. In this one, he's making a personal human judgment on the character of God in the Bible. These which, are two totally different contexts. Which again, is fair. I mean, has this guy, I, I'd, I'd assume this guy has read the Bible, but like, if you've read it, this is pretty, this is a pretty good characterization. Let's, let's see, let's see what he thinks the problem is though. Okay. Clearly Dawkins is not coming to that conclusion based on his atheism, which he says dictates no evil, no good. Notice, all of those challenges to God of the Old Testament. Well, I mean, he's not coming to that conclusion based on atheism. He's coming to that conclusion based on reading the Bible and however he determines his moral, like wherever his morality comes from. Like I base my morality off of harm. If something does harm, generally it's bad. If something does not do harm, it's generally amoral. If something is does something good or is po it brings a positive outcome, then it's good. I mean, it's really basic. That's it's just that's really dumbing it down. But I mean, it would depend how, on how Dawkins determines morality for himself, well, which right. I don't know because he's kind of an asshole. Well, yeah, he is. But the the point that that Coco's trying to make here is that if Dawkins thinks that, that there is no evil and there's no good or anything like that, then he shouldn't have this particular opinion about God in the Bible. He's doing the conflating thing again. Yeah. Yeah, because he's saying there that the universe is amoral and so he can't make any determinations on human human characteristics or right. behavior. This is classic quote mining and yeah. equivocating. Well, and it's just it doesn't even flow logically. Right. So or that he's evil. That complaint against God makes no sense in his worldview. But I'll tell you something, moral assessments like that, I don't think they're accurate in his case, but that kind of assessment make perfect sense in our worldview. Well, no, it doesn't. I, I, I insanely disagree with this <laughs> because in the Christian worldview, at least as reported by evangelicals, just like Greg Kokel, uh, or, you know, like Frank Turk and all them, God is the standard of good. OK, right. the only things that are bad are things that do not glorify God. Well, I okay? think what he's saying is being able to get to characterize someone's behavior just in general, not necessarily God. Just the ability to characterize someone be someone's behavior makes no sense for Dawkins because he doesn't believe in morals, which is not true. Right. Um, but it makes sense for them because apparently they create morals. But well, in someone else's morality, it, they could have a different standard. Right. Uh, but I mean, uh, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that on a Christian worldview, the statement that, that Dawkins made doesn't make sense because uh, God, anything that God does is good. Right. So anything that God uh, has commanded, like Numbers 31, where he has, uh, where God has the Israelites kill all the Midianites except for the little girls haven't known the touch of a man mm -hmm. for obviously non-sex reasons, you know, right? Mm -hmm. That would be considered good. Like that was done for a good reason. And plenty of apologists out there make the argument that it was a good reason that God had for, for commanding the Israelites to kill all. They make a lot of arguments for making bad shit good. I know. But I guess ultimately my point is, is that Dawkins statement on a Christian worldview mm -hmm. does not make any kind of sense. If you apply his statement to God, it doesn't make sense. Right. If they're, if he's just speaking generally, which is what I was trying to say, if he's I just know. speaking generally about making an assessment on any given person's 
behavior, it wouldn't make sense from a, but from God, from a, from if, if he's talking about God specifically, I agree, but if he's not, then I, I think it's fine. Well, right. Well, with the exception that, you know, Christians and the Bible doesn't own the corner on right. like moral statements or anything no, like that. No, of course not. I mean, we, we, we've had, uh, you know, people contemplate the morality or the moral implications of their actions before Judaism was even conceived. So mm-hmm. it doesn't make a lot of sense for him to say that it requires his particular version of God in order to have any kind of moral knowledge. Yeah. I mean, we know of moral and ethical standards that existed and societal rules that existed well before any of the Abrahamic religions. Well, and and given that our decision-making process is a purely chemically driven process, it doesn't make a, a, a lot of sense to me, at least, to say that, oh, well, you wouldn't have this moral knowledge without God. Our decision-making process is purely chemical. Well, yeah, but, but, you know, because it's it's a chemical process in the brain that happens. I mean, it's a it's a complex process. Your subconscious makes the, a decision up to seven seconds before you're made aware of it. Okay. And I mean, that subconscious is a. Is, I mean, it's definitely a chemically driven. Con- I mean, your entire brain's chemically driven. Uh, okay. I mean, fair. I guess I just I was not thinking of it in that way. I was thinking of it in like to me what I was hearing when you were saying decision is a chemical process. That would decision making process is chemical. To me, that means you're like reacting based off of chemicals or emotion that cause emo- certain emotions. And like, oh. th- that's how I interpreted what you were saying. And that's not what you were meaning. No, no, no. That's not what I was meaning. I mean, I'm just talking about the basic bio of like biochemical processes that the brain goes through oh. um, in because, general. Like, the decision making process is an actual logical, like, like it's a, it's an actual thing. It's not chemical based. No, no, no. I'm talking about the actual, the, the physical, like, decision-making. Not, like, the decision-making process, like, um, it, it, as far as analytical or, or logical thinking okay, goes. Okay, all right. Yeah, I just, we, we were talking about t- totally different things. My bad. Okay. I'm so sorry. That's okay. So Dawkins, notice, is living in a contradiction on this issue, all right? He talks on the one hand, kind of like an atheist, and then all of a sudden, when his guard is down, his natural understanding of morality that God built into him is coming out. But it's a contradiction with his atheism. When his guard is down? Apparently. (laughs) Just because he, he understands that there are, there's some moral code going on doesn't mean it has anything to do with your God, dude. (laughs) Well, and also like when Doc, when Dawkins was making the uh, moral judgment against God, I mean, I would think that would be when his guard is completely up because, I mean, he was make, he was writing a, a book specifically about how I, bullshit God is. I think the assessment of Dawkins like guard is irrelevant <laughs> entirely. <laughs> guard up, guard down doesn't fucking matter. You don't know. You don't know what he was thinking when he wrote that. You can't possibly know that. So there's no reason to say it. Like it just it just makes no sense and it's irrelevant. Right. And that is a point of tension. And Francis Schaeffer said, when we see that, when we see Dawkins in this case bumping into reality, when he raises those kinds of moral complaints against God, and he's trading on our worldview, not his, that's where we can draw attention to it and use that on our behalf. What I'm saying is this Christianity has better explanatory power. In other words, it fits the world in a way that atheism does not on some very, very important issues. And these are issues that resonate with our deepest intuitions about reality, our deepest understandings about the way the world actually is. So list them and explain in detail. Well, I think that, I mean, he he says that there are three things that he's going to talk about. So this is just the the first course about it. And so th- this particular bump that he's talking about is claiming that there's no morality, but then making moral judgments. And so that like, he's not but again, explicitly he's, equiv- he's equivocating natural processes with human behavior, right? He's basically saying that morality is a problem for atheists. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me because, you know, we would have moral knowledge of things, mm-hmm. uh, whether or not a God exists, because, our decision-making process and our ability to think 
you know, about the moral implications of our actions is only dependent upon chemistry and is not dependent on a supernatural deity. I mean, nothing's dependent on a supernatural deity, but my point is, is that we have verifiable evidence that, you know, uh, uh, all that's needed for us to make moral conclusions or to think about our, the moral implications of our actions is to have just a complex nervous system. And I mean, this holds true for other organisms, other animals out there that have somewhat complex, uh, 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 moral, um, or complex central nervous systems. They also can, can think about, you know, the moral implications of their actions. And they do. And we see more, we see moral or ethical kind of actions among some groups of animals. Yeah. And so it it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to sit there and try to act like we're special, like as far as like the argument for morality goes, because when you can point to these other animals that have less complex central nervous systems, Mm -hmm. but they're still complex enough to have these kind of thoughts and feelings. Yeah. Like dogs, dogs have a very basic sort of, um, uh, at least inclination of the moral implications of their actions. I mean, we're certainly different. Yes. But I mean, I guess when you say that we're not special, I mean, we are, but we're not special in the ways that I think that, they want to think that we are. And well, I, I don't think that they give enough credence to the fact that we are animals too. Right. Well, and by, by special, I mean like, you know, specially created by God or oh, no. like, like the, the world is, is created for us or, or oh, it's definitely not because lots of things are trying to kill us. Right. And so it's definitely not created for us. Most well, of this fucking planet we can't even live on. And, and so but when I say special, I'm using special from definitely a more uh, re- like religion oriented uh, view because we obviously are special because we become the apex animal on, on this planet. In but if you go out in the lot. fucking woods or in the ocean, your ass is going to get eaten by a bear or shark. Sorry. Yeah, I don't understand people that'll <laughs> like go spear fishing amongst a whole bunch of fucking sharks. Like that just seems like a death wish, honestly. I mean, it's uh, fun for some people. They love that shit. Not, not me. No, me either. Mm-mm. All in all, for this video, I was just not at all like convinced by uh, his moral argument. I also wasn't convinced by his, you know, definitions of atheism and theism uh, as far as like the idea that atheists, atheists like make a positive claim. I just, I wasn't convinced by anything that he said about that. I wasn't convinced that, you know, there's a, there's a moral plot problem for the atheists because obviously we can make moral con- or we can make moral judgments uh, and, and come to moral conclusions, not require a God. And we're also more importantly, as Frank Turk would say, stealing from God. We're <laughs> definitely not doing that because it's, it's a totally natural process and it does not require God in order for us to have any kind of knowledge, let alone moral knowledge. I, I feel like this um, STR course at STR University maybe needs to rethink their lesson plan. I mean, perhaps not only was I not convinced, I felt like whether he intended to be or not, a lot of his arguments um, were dishonest. They they had a they just did not have a solid foundation. And so I, I didn't I thought of stuff a lot of stuff did not logically flow and he kind of generalized a lot of things that don't need to be and in ways that I felt were not necessary well accurate I just don't think they were accurate and so whether I I hate to say he was lying about stuff but it just I feel like it was dishonest I don't know if he intended to be or he was just going from a certain angle but if you're going from a certain angle you need to say that Mm -hmm. um so that's what got me um about this video that I just thought was irritating right there with you thank you so much for joining me tonight there hon you're welcome yeah anyways i hope that you heathens have a great weekend i hope you have a great night Uh, have a great weekend don't forget to stand up and use your voice bye heathens bye y'all